So before we go on, I just thought I would start with uh, taking a look at the PICO that I wrote for the sample scenario. Yours may look a bit different because I said there is no real right answer for a, a PICO. Um, it's just a tool to help you analyze the scenario. So our patient is at risk of heart disease or cardiovascular disease. Uh, she's interested in vitamin D supplements, possibly compared to folic acid supplements, possibly combined. Um, and the outcome that we're looking for is really prevention, prevention of the patient developing heart disease. So just wanted to start out, make sure we are all semi on the, on the same page with that. <clears throat> okay, so let's talk a little bit about the next step in searching, which is brainstorming keywords, a very important step. Um, and so we'll talk about some sample scenarios. We'll start with a pa paramedic style example. So we saw this question last time, does pre-hospital intubation increase survival rates for patients with out-of-hospital cardiac arrest. We said that the patient has out-of-hospital cardiac arrest and what we're considering is pre-hospital tracheal intubation. There's no comparison listed here. And then the outcome we're interested in is survival rates. I'm gonna take these concepts and I'm gonna begin brainstorming keywords for them. And the way I'm gonna do that is by creating a table with each what I consider to be concept in its own column. Now a couple of things you'll notice here is that I've separated pre-hospital and tracheal in intubation. Um, I've put out of hospital here and also cardiac arrest. I haven't put survival rates um, and that's it's often because when you're searching the outcome is like you know not important to search for sometimes because it's like if we're talking about pre-hospital tracheal intubation naturally what we're going to be interested in is survival rates. Right, so logically, I don't have to put survival rates into my search. So this is just a judgment call that I've made best on, um, based on my intuition and best practice, right? I'm gonna focus on searching pre-hospital tracheal intubation, intubation, which is the intervention, and out-of-hospital cardiac arrest, which is the major problem going on. And I'm sorry, I've, I've switched them, so I have my intervention columns first. Hopefully that's not confusing to anybody. But now it's start time for me to start thinking about other ways to say these things. The things I need to start thinking about are synonyms, yes, broader terms and narrower terms, and then word variations. So the same word in the English language can be written a little differently. We have to think about these things because as I've said to a computer, um, searching pre-hospital is one word is different than searching pre-hospital to a computer that hyphen makes the word a different word. So I have to think about that. How is pre-hospital going to be written in other, um, in other articles? Another thing I noticed when I was sort of brainstorming is that pre-hospital and out-of-hospital kind of mean the same thing. So I might combine that column and put out-of-hospital as a synonym for pre-hospital um, when we're talking about things that are pre-hospital, we're talking about things that paramedics or emergency medical services will be involved in. So although that's not an exact synonym, I think those are related terms I'll want to include in my search or even ambulance, you know, something that happens in an ambulance. That's related to the concept of, of pre-hospital treatment. For tracheal intubation, I didn't really, I as a medical librarian, sometimes there are gaps in my knowledge. I don't have any kind of medical training. I have a layperson's understanding that gets better with every search that I do. So I had to look up tracheal intubation. <clears throat> and I actually found that there were two kinds of tracheal intubation, intratracheal and endotracheal. And then sometimes they are abbreviated as ITI or ETI. But then I realized there's no reason to be specific about tracheal intubation because a broader term, intubation, is probably all I need to search. And then cardiac arrest, anytime you have something cardiac, you're also want to search for the variant heart. So let me show you the table that I ultimately made. As I said, pre-hospital, I'm searching pre-hospital, the related term paramedic, the related term emergency, the related term out of hospital and ambulance. There are no, as you can see, no right or wrong answers for keyword brainstorming. In this step, it's really important to just let your mind play, write down anything you can think of, 
And also to do a little background searching as I had to do to learn more about tracheal intubation, which was something I didn't know very much about. Um, so I'm going to talk about how to do that in a bit. But next, let's look at another example. <clears throat> Excuse me. Sort of a PT example here, the effectiveness of water aerobics versus weight training in treating patients with moderate to severe knee osteoarthritis. So the patient has knee osteoarthritis. We're interested in the advent intervention of water aerobics versus weight training. And the outcome is, not, again, not that interesting. It doesn't bring any new concepts in. Obviously, we just want to treat the symptoms of knee osteoarthritis. So I have, this is what I came up with. My patient problem, my intervention, and my comparison are the three concepts I want to move forward with putting into my search and brainstorming. And um, I have to admit that I thought that there weren't going to be that many synonyms. But then when I started searching and looking around, I realized that um, water aerobics, there's a lot of ways to say that, aquatic exercise or aquatic training. Or one thing I didn't even realize until I'd been searching for quite a while, I came across the term hydrotherapy. So I came back and I added it to my table because as we talked about, searching is iterative. You can do a search and then realize there's a new concept or a new keyword I need to think about. Come back and update your keyword brainstorming table because you will be working from that throughout the search. Um, weight training is uh, resistance training, but also uh, in physical therapy, they contrast it to water or aquatic training by calling it land-based exercises. And I didn't know that until I started reading some journal articles. Um, and I did a little searching and then I realized it's a more general term. Um, it's any land-based exercise, not just weight training. But there were articles out there contrasting land-based exercises versus aquatic exercises. That's a more general term, but it's still related to my search. And so I started to include land-based exercises in my search as a general term. So there are no easy answers here. You can see that this is kind of a squishy thing. It's kind of a thing you learn as you go. You add concepts to your table as you discover them, right? What's important to do when you're building your table is also do background research. Um, generally, when I am building a keyword table, I'm hopping over to Google Scholar. I have Google here, but Google Scholar um, is a similar search engine that uses semantic search technology to search um, journal articles. And it can bring up some really good results really fast that I can skim and then I can learn more about the topic and find some good keywords. Wikipedia is totally fine to browse for keywords, as well as thesaurus.com, especially for general concepts that are not medical concepts. For example, children. If you go to thesaurus.com and put in children, you're going to get a ton of synonyms right away suggested, like youths, infants, teenagers, primary school, all the things we said before. For the medical concepts, it's always a great idea to refresh your memory by looking at a textbook. Clinical Key via the ISU library is a great source of textbooks. There are also medical reference sources that the library provides. An important one is called UpToDate. Um, and all of these things are things you can access off campus just by using your Bengal ID number and your last name. And I'll do a demo for you. So what we're going to do is look at that Idaho Health Sciences library there's a handy quick databases list there that will allow you to access a lot of the things we've been talking about, including this up-to-date and clinical key. So I am going to end my um, slideshow here for now and switch over to a live demo. Okay, so here's how I would go about doing some background searching on um, a, a health science topic when I was doing keyword generation. Right, so I could uh, just start in this big bar. So isu.edu forward slash library is the uh, URL for the library homepage. Um, I'm searching today on someone who wanted to know about whether aspirin would prevent um, preeclampsia. Um, she's a pregnant woman with hypertension, is concerned about her risk of preeclampsia, and is asking about aspirin and prevention. I just wanted to learn a little background information about hypertension and preeclampsia. If I wanted to, I could just start with one of these topics, but um, 
you know, I'm going to look at both of them in relation to one another. If I start from the one search bar, um, there are a couple of advantages of this and there are a couple of disadvantages, right? It searches almost everything the library subscribes to, which means you're going to get a ton of stuff that it's not going to necessarily be that useful to you. Um, right now, I don't necessarily want to look at journal articles more. I more want to look at like book chapters to read a little background information. Stuff like this is um, a bit uh, too specific for me right now. So what I want to direct your attention to over on the left is if I come down to source types. This is a really useful menu. I could see that I found over 100,000 academic journals, but what I really want to look at is some ebooks. If I click this blue show more link, it will allow me to then check the box for ebooks only. I found over 1,000 ebooks. And if I hit update, now my results only show ebooks and they only show, uh, you know, the, the ebooks by title. Controversies and preeclampsia, this, all this. So I don't want, I want to read the entire book today, um, but if I wanted to, I could come in and pop open these table of contents and I could see chapter seven, hypertension and pregnancy. So I could read this and this, this would probably be pretty good background information. And if you're doing this from home, you should be able to have the same access as I do from campus. You'll just have to put in your Bengal ID and your last name at some point to verify that you are um, a student, a ISU student. So another thing that's a, a little bit more helpful when you just need to read a, a book chapter or textbook chapter is if you start from the Idaho Health Sciences Library homepage, there's a handy link to a product called Clinical Key, which has a ton of textbooks in it. It also has a lot of journal articles and drug monographs and other things. But what I'm going to do here is I am going to pop open this search menu, which controls where I'm searching, and I'm just going to choose books. And by the way, preeclampsia can al also be hyphenated. So um, I, as a searcher, may not know that yet. But that's something I might discover as I start to read through some of these articles, alternate spellings, synonyms, etc. Such as hypertensive instead of hypertension, the adjective instead of the noun. Those are some of the things we can be looking for. Hypertensive disorders, not hypertension. Um, yeah, so preeclampsia and hypertensive disorders, this is a good chapter. In fact, it's a chapter excerpt, so if I click on it, it's going to take me right to the relevant portion of this chapter. Um, and, you know, I can read through some background information here. Um, so that's some one option you can do. I, while we're in clinical key, I want to direct your attention also to drug monographs here, which is where I can sort of look up um, information about some drugs, and sometimes the vitamins are in here too. Um, let me try folic acid. Yeah, so I can come in folic acid, vitamin B9, which is another name for it, which is good to know, right? Um, this could be a potential synonym for our search. As I come through here, I may find um, other names for it as well. Um, and down at the bottom, I, see, I can see all of these different information, contraindications, et cetera. So all this is really interesting information here. Um, if I'm interested in searching on a drug, it's a good idea to check out um, the drug and the other names for it. So that's clinical key. The next thing I want to show you back on the Health Sciences Library homepage it's a product that is a very useful product. It's called a point of care product, which means it's supposed to be used by doctors at the point of care when they're seeing a patient to get quick background information on whatever condition you know um, the patient has, including the most up-to-date you know evidence. So if I click on this guy, up to date, I can come in, and search on preeclampsia. 
And what I'm going to see as I scroll down here is, oh, there's, there's even a entry for hypertension in pregnancy. So when I click into this article, there um, are going to be, you know, what's useful is to look over here in the summary, the topic outline, a quick introduction, um, some other, you know, information, differential diagnosis, et cetera, and then links to um, most the most recent references on the topic as well journal articles. It's a very cool tool that can give you a lot of good information very quickly. So as you've probably guessed, what we're going to do next is have you take a look in your worksheet, do some keyword brainstorming for the sample scenario that we worked on previously. Um, and here's some final words of wisdom for searching. Really think carefully about these keywords. One problem that I often see is that searchers use long phrases when they could be using a single word to get their idea across. If a searcher searches the full phrase autism spectrum disorder, what you need to know about that is that you're asking the computer to find all three words, autism spectrum disorder. Well, many journal articles um, are searched only by their title and abstract in these databases, and they may not use the full phrase, they may just use autism. Because all three words have to be in the record for it to be found, this searcher will miss a great record that only uses the, the verbiage children with autism without including spectrum disorder. So simplify, simplify, simplify when it comes to the words you put into the computer. You can always add in more words to make your search more narrow if you need to, but start broad. The other problem I see is that searchers forget about verb conjugates. So a searcher might type in educating patients, um, but the search engine does not automatically check for word variants. So this searcher will miss a great record that only contains the phrase patient education. And when you really start thinking about this with English language verbs, there are so many variations, right? So many different tenses, etc. Educate, educates, educated, da 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 da. But don't worry, when we get to constructing search strings, I will show you a trick for this so that it's quick and easy to deal with and you don't have to worry about it too much. Finally, think about word variations um, from nouns to adjectives. Pre-diabetes, what about pre-diabetic? Pre-diabetic, what about pre-diabetic? Compound words. Um, you know, sometimes one is used, sometimes the, times the other is used, and it's hard to predict when um, one will be used. And synonyms for common words, common concepts like beliefs, there are so many other ways to say this, attitudes, perceptions, thesaurus.com may really help you here. So again, bottom line, computer doesn't know which words you'll find relevant, you need to decide and you need to tell it. So you, what we're going to do is you're going to try it, right, using the Pico that you created in question one, do some background searching, uh, using the tools that I talked about, clinical key, um, up to date using the one search bar you can even go to thesaurus.com on the web to play around with that and fill out keyword table the keyword table in question two of your worksheet good luck have fun